Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well. I hope wherever you are, it's either warming up or cooling down. Where I am, it's finally starting to cool down. So a little bit of reprieve from the heat and a bit of, ooh, bit of rain makes a huge difference. I'm Mel, this is my channel, Patchy Pony Stitcher, and this is my floss tube number 12. So welcome if you're new, and if you're a returning subscriber, thank you. This is so BS. That's what I've called this video for a number of different reasons. Now the first BS thing has nothing to do with Bendy Stitchy. It's total BS. I had my first finish for the year. It was great. It was my Lizzie Kate tea time. And I don't even have the chart to show you. Finished it up. I was so happy. Didn't take a photo. Don't know why. Didn't take a photo. Watched Vana's tutorial on lacing. I laced it. It was amazing. It was, it was so much easier than I ever thought it would be. Got it ready to do my flat fold. So I'd left it to, so I'd put the, the um, mat, matting board, not the matting board, the, um, the wadding underneath and I probably used a little bit too much glue and the, so I'd left it all to dry to come back and do the flat folding the next day and the glue had come through onto the Ada and when it was wet I thought oh that'll dry I won't see it no nope, you could see it it was a disaster so what I thought I'd do is I because it was a tea dyed um, Ada to begin with so what I thought I'd do was give it a bit more of a tea dye to try and cover the glue spots. Nope. It, like was, it looked like bleach. So the rest of the fabric went dark and the glue spots stayed a lighter colour. It was so obvious. I was so annoyed. There was nothing I could do. So I took it as a learning experience. But what I didn't do was take a photo of the, final, of the finished cross stitch. I'm so annoyed at myself. But I ended up tossing it out. I can't even show you because I was so wild. It was just like, throw the whole lot out. So luckily it was only a small finish, but I was so excited about how the lacing turned out. It was, I was actually really surprised. It was so easy. So if you haven't given lacing a try before, give it a go. It's not that hard. And the results were just amazing. You do use a lot of cotton, but well worth the effort. So that was total BS that I had to throw out a finished object that and I did oh, so mad but you move on don't you so my whips for this month so it's been four weeks since I last updated actually no it's been five weeks we've had my husband's been on long service leave and I just don't record when people are home I just can't I just get self-conscious it's silly so I just I don't bother so it's been five weeks since you've last seen me. Now my first whip is my Prairie Romance, which is on my big frame. So I'm gonna pause you for a moment and insert a video of the update of that one. So first of all, I'll show you a photo of where I was up to, and then it will follow as to my progress for this month. So the Prairie Romance is coming along nicely. I've finished the um, two rows since you last saw it in my last update and yay finally starting to see a bit of the pony's face so I'm just sort of nudging into this part here so happy with the way that's coming along it called for 721 I picked that out of my flosses and I nearly died I was like oh my god that is so bright but it was working you can see that here's my 721 thread and not many stitches in it, but definitely bright orange in there. So really happy with how that's coming along. It's uh, unfortunately it's been going what since the 27th of June. And it's not because I don't like working on it. It's just I get distracted on the smaller pieces. So I might really concentrate on that one um, up now until the beginning of Mania because I'd really like to see the horses start to come out of the picture but really happy with how that is that is coming along. So that's Prairie Romance by Shining, Stun, Shining Suns Cross Stitching on, um, on the internet. So pleased with the way that one's coming along. I'm gonna try and spend a little bit more time on it this month. I really wanna see those ponies come out of the picture. 
The next whip that I've been working on is the Hawk Run Hollow Sow. So I've been working on Hawk farms at Hawk Run Hollow by Courage House Sampling. So that's the chart and so far I've done the first four. One, two, three, four. So I'll show you what the chart's meant to look like on this apple butter one, if it's gonna focus. So it says Grammy Jane's apple butter. So that doesn't really resonate with me. We don't have, well, I guess we do have apple butter here in Australia, but it's not something that's commonly made, um, made in homes and stuff. So we do have apples here on our little hobby farm. So we've got a few apple trees. And when it's apple picking time, it's apple crumble time. So I changed my, oops, so I can see. I changed my jammy, what was it? Granny Jane's apple butter to farm fresh apple crumble. So I've done a few little changes there. Now I've used variegated Weeks Dye Works in the brown background on the sign. That was just meant to be a standard flat DMC. And in the apron of Grammy Jane, I it was meant to be white, but I felt it was too stark for this fabric. So I used a light blue from Cotton Colour Works. Is it Cotton Colour Works? Colour and Cotton, sorry. Colour and Cotton, just to sort of soften it a bit, which I'm really happy with. I really like the the light blue so that's coming along well so this is how much i've done so far so i've done four blocks and i must admit i am a little bit burnt out with it i've been trying to do a block a month and i'm finding i'm pushing myself to do it which is not what i want to do so i actually put it down for a little bit um this past couple of well weekend and picked up something totally new and I just really enjoyed stitching again whereas I and then I came back to this to try and finish it before the video and I was just like Bleh. I just didn't want to so I think I'm going to put it away for a month and actually not work on it at all now with the blue color and cotton it came on a skein like this big long one and it was already cut at the bottom and I was watching someone's video. I'm oh, sorry, I can't remember your name. I do apologize. But I, when I've used cut strands like this, I've always pulled the whole lot off the, off the little floss holder and then pulled one strand out. And she had this really great tip on a video. So just in case you, you, everybody probably knows, it's probably me that's like, duh. But so what she did is she pulled out, I'm gonna try and show you, just pull one little, thread out and you just pull the whole lot and you know you don't have to actually take it off the card I just <laughs> maybe everybody knows that but I certainly didn't and that makes it easy so much easier now I understand why they put them on these cards but you do have to have it cut at the bottom unlike the weeks they have that in a continuous um, continuous thread perfect love it something <laughs> makes my life a little bit easier so that is my hawk run hollow so you probably won't see that again for a couple of um for a couple of videos even though it's a sale i just think i have to give myself a bit of a break from it it's a huge project it's a 92 by 92 with each block and i don't it doesn't look like much but they're actually quite time consuming those blocks and a lot of it is full coverage so it does tend to wear you down so I think I'm just going to give that one a bit of a rest. Now the next one which I'm absolutely enjoying so much is my Oz. So I'm going to insert a picture here of where I was and also of the chart face so you can see what it's going to look like at the end. So that's my Oz so far, well, where I was up to by Ori TM. Now it is an out of, ch out of print chart, so it can be a little bit difficult to get. Now I'm doing a stitch along with Shell from Tranquil Stitches on this one, and she's starting at the left hand and going up, and I've started at the right hand top and going down. So this is where I'm up to, oops, so far. So previously I'd done, we've got the lion. Let's move this over here. So I've got the lion. 
Emerald City, the Munchkins, and thank you everyone for commenting when I couldn't remember what they were called. And we've got Dorothy. Doesn't she look amazing? I am so wrapped with how that's come along. Now it did just call for a blue DMC, but I chose a Silks For You variegated thread because I hadn't used anything really variegated like that before, so I was really keen to try it. And I'm so wrapped with how that's come out. It's just gorgeous. And we've got a little sparkly crinic in the red shoe. So, so happy. So this is the, I've bobbinated the silks for you, but that's how variegated it is. So I did try to be a little bit picky with how much purple went into the dress because I really just wanted the darker and the lighter blue, but I you know, don't want to waste too much thread either. So, so pleased with how that's coming along and it's on a uh, 28 count, um, opalescent fabric by Sparklies. So, so happy with the way that is. So, I hadn't purchased any silks for you and I'm, and a lot of people I hear using silks and I've never used them and I didn't really want to pay a lot of money not knowing if I'd like them. Now, silks for you do big, massive hanks, and you can buy these hanks, but unless you're gonna be doing something all in the one thread, it just seemed a little bit silly to go spending such a large amount of money on a huge, huge hank, which would last you forever. Um, so I went on to the Etsy store to have a look and see what I could find, and they actually have little grab bags. So you, you don't know what color you're gonna get, and it's a mix of 10 skeins, and these are the, the colours that I got in, in my, oopsies, hang on, I'm missing one. No, I'm missing two. So if I try and, so as well as the one that I've already bobbinated, that was the prettiest one I feel. These are the colours that I got in the grab bag from Silks For You. So 10 different coloured silks. I'll try and make that orange. The orange is really bright. But it's a great variety of different colours and um, just to try it out. I do like them. Um, they're very soft compared to cotton and colour. No, colour and, the colour and cottons, but then they're cotton so they're a lot softer and they, and they are nice to use. So it's definitely something I would order again, but I don't think I'd do a whole project in them. Um, I'd just sort of substitute the ones that I've got in and maybe do another grab bag in the future. And see, there are some, yeah, so that one's quite variegated as well as is the pink. So if you do like variegated flosses, it's a good way just to bump your stash up a little bit at a reasonable cost because they're essentially, I guess, offcuts from the hanks and so forth. But they were quite pretty, so I was happy with those. Now my other whip, which is a finish. <laughs> I have, this is my first, no, technically it's my second finish for the year, but it's the only finish that I have managed to not bugger up. So, and also keep to be able to show you. So now I'll just get this ready to show you. Now it's so BS because it's Michelle Bendy's birthday weekend stitch. So this project I used for her stitch, birthday stitch along. And so we had to choose, so it was a Friday, Saturday, Sunday stitch along. B, you had to stitch, on the Friday you stitch something starting with B, S for Saturday and BS for Bendy Stitchy on, um, on the Sunday. So I chose the Yule Queen by Primitive Hair. So, and I actually, I'm not gonna, it does have, actually I'll get the chart. Bear with me one moment. So this is the chart. And as you'll see, it's got Yule Queen also charted in it. Now this one's actually Michelle's copy. So I actually purchased this off Michelle's D-Stash on, um, 
on her Instagram account. And she got it from Keepsakes when she was at StitchCon. So it's been, it's, you know, from uh, Cincinnati to Michelle, now down to Tassie in Australia. So this, now there's a couple of reasons I chose this chart. Uh, one, because I needed something to break up the monotony of Corker and Hollow, but also it was, some, it was one of the ones I've been looking forward to the most. So we've got B for brown and beige. We've got, now <laughs> I was a bit cheeky with my S. Because when Michelle was stitching this, she kept referring to it as her stag in drag. So my S was stag in drag. And then the BS, well, it's totally bendy stitchy because it's her old chart. And I was trying to be bendy stitchy and push it out in the whole weekend. Unfortunately, I didn't quite make it. I still had the snowflakes to do, but I was really happy with where I got to. And I managed to finish that yesterday. Now, there is another BS part about this chart too. French knots. Hadn't done them before. So I had to find your tutorial and all of those dots in that are French knots. Now you'd think French knots, you watch the tutorial go, how hard can it be? <laughs> yeah, it probably took me 15 knots before it actually worked for me so I really and yeah I nearly gave up I'm like oh I just it just wouldn't not for me but I wasn't holding the tension um, taut enough as the needle went through the rounded or well, the threads that twist around the the needle but eventually it happened and once I got one it was just like pop 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 they all just happened so I was really happy with that learned a new skill now this um this fabric is on, this fabric, this, this stitching is on 32 count cotton even weave that I tea dyed, uh, not tea dyed, gosh Melissa, that I dyed myself. It did call for a cappuccino colour, cappuccino which you ordered directly through Primitive Hair. So I used a brown rip dye and I just wanted it to be quite light and it actually looks a little bit mauvey pink. Mauvey pink there, but it's actually like a brownie colour. So I'm happy with how the, the snowflakes come out if it's not in direct light. If you're looking at it in direct light, the snowflakes do tend to get a little bit lost. But otherwise, um, yeah. So I'm, now I've got to find a perfect frame for it and I'm hoping to find got two two options that I'm looking for like a nice ornate rounded oval frame or I'd like to get a shaker type of frame where it's got a little bit of space and I've ordered some snowflakes off wish and I'd put it in the in the front of so mount it all up and then you've got the space between the glass and the stitching and fill that up with snowflakes at the bottom I saw someone do it on floss tube I can't again I'm terrible I should write this stuff down Someone had done a coffee pattern and then put coffee beans in the bottom of theirs and it, you could shake it and the coffee beans rattled around and I thought, oh, that'd look pretty cool with the, with the snow being able to be moved around inside. So we'll see what frame I find first and whether the snowflakes off Wish are any good. It's a bit of a gamble sometimes with Wish, but it was cheap and we'll see. We'll see. So really happy with the way that came along. So I do have a used chart now. So I'm gonna hold on to that for my birthday in July giveaway. Cause that's so BS to do is to give presents away on your birthday. So keep a, keep, make sure you tune back in in July and I'll be uh, giving that one away. And that will also have Michelle Bendy's conversion in it for her. She used a lot of cotton color works and weeks conversion so I'll have I'll ha have her conversion in there as well so if you want to see her finish on your queen you'll just need to go back through her videos I'll link her below and uh, you can see her FFO on your queen if you want to have a look at changing the colors for the fabric that I used on your queen I'd actually bought quite a large 
um, quantity. This is nearly like two metres, but I've cut some off. Um, of the 32 count, is it 32? Yeah, 32 count antique even weave by Sew It All Australia. And so it, it's, it really is quite a large, a large bit of fabric that I've started to cut up, but it's such a lovely soft quality. And I think um, that's what I'm gonna be doing with the majority of my fabrics is buying it in bulk like that and dyeing it myself when I'm kidding up. I do like dyeing, it's a lot of fun. I've been getting all my mania starts ready. Uh, and that included, so I've got quite a few smalls actually planned for mania. Um, so it's good to be able to use up all the little bits and bobs. And so I've been doing a lot of dyeing and pulling flosses, but I'm, I won't be showing you those until, until, until I start those, each and every one of those charts. But um, if you're in Australia and you want to have a look um, at buying bulk fabric, check out Sew It All Australia because the prices are fantastic. The shipping is reasonable. And then you've got fabric on hand whenever you need it. If, and if you're confident with dyeing, why not? Give it a go. So my plans for, uh, what are we in March? Plans for, for between now and April. So I've kitted up all my mania starts, so that's all ready to go. So now I can just concentrate on doing some stitching. So I think I'll continue working on Oz, of course. And then also I'll be doing my full coverage piece with the Prairie Romance with the horses. Because I've got another full coverage that I want to do. But I like having my full coverage on my big frame because you don't have to keep getting it out. You can sit down and do put 100 stitches in quite quick and easily because all the... Everything's ready to go. What is the other full coverage, you ask? I want to do an Outlander themed full coverage. Now, I know Hayde have some Outlander. If you're not sure what Outlander is, it's a TV program. And if you haven't watched it, where have you been? It's amazing. Go check it out. It's so good. I'm actually slightly obsessed. I feel like a teenage kid just like oh, I've got to watch it watch it watch it it's so good so anyway being the obsessive type of personality I am I wanted to do a stitching on it so I checked in with what Hayde had and they had a few designs but it really wasn't something that I was after because being horsey I'd really look, and there's a lot of horses in this show I would I wanted to have something essentially horse related as well as the character related so I then had a look and purchased some images. So I'll show you the images that I would like to have as a stitching. So I'll insert those here. So they're just so beautiful, those images, and lots of detail, love the tartan. It, that'd be a huge project with so much greenery, but I'm prepared to do it. So I started trying to use the software programs where you import an image in and it spits out a cross stitch, but I'm really reluctant because I did try that with an actual photograph of a friend towards the beginning of getting back into cross stitch, and the colourings of the skin were just were dreadful. So I ended up tossing it out. I didn't even frog it. I just threw the whole lot out because I was so unhappy with the colouring. So I'm a little bit dubious as to whether to spend all that time doing a full coverage like that to get to the centre and the colours be wrong. And I guess you can change them, but it's nice to know that you can just follow the chart. So I contacted Hayde and asked them if by any chance were they looking at putting out some more charts with Outlander themed um, theme designs and I actually said yes they were however I don't know when it's going to be <laughs> so I'm a little bit mm, do I wait and see what they've got or do I just bite the bullet and go with the images that I really love so I'm still umming and ahhing so if you've got any suggestions of software programs that you've used that you'd be quite confident in using again I'd love to hear about them because the, I've only used two and one was for the, um, the tribal horse and that was just one colour so it worked perfectly, it was great. 
but with the photograph where you've got skin tones and you want some because I think it only goes up to a certain amount of colors and that's where you run into problems because you're not getting the detail I think it's like only um, maybe less than a hundred colors and because there's so many greeneries and there's tartan and and all sorts of things it's probably not going to be enough color var variation for for the detail that I'm looking for so I might hang out and wait for Hay to release something else. They've got an, um, another season. The TV show has yet to release its next season. So I guess when that is released on television, it might sort of stir things on that they may look at releasing the next one. But in my obsession, I needed something outlanderish to to satisfy my, <laughs> my uh, obsession. And... I got a project bag, so I'll just grab that. Should have had that ready, there it is. Now, of course, I went on to try and find something outlander themed, couldn't find anything except for one bag, which was beautifully made, but it was from the United States. and It was gonna cost me like 54 Australian dollars, which is like 65 US. So it was like, I can't really justify that sort of money just on a project bag. So I got in contact with Taryn, at Teaser Handmade and she does a lot of project bags and so and also tote bags here in Australia and she's got a Facebook page so I'll link that below in case you're from Australia and you'd like to check out what she's got on offer. So she said no she didn't have any Outlander fabric but if I sourced some she was happy to make it for me. So I found some fabric and um, on eBay and I got it sent directly to Taryn and she was able to make up a bag for me that was Outlander inspired. So the brown, the Outlander fabric with the words and the um, silhouettes on is the one that I purchased off eBay and had that sent to Taryn and then she matched the floral above with it. Isn't that just beautiful? She does such a good job and I've got a cat hair on it already. Such a gorgeous job with, with her bags. So it's just got plain black inside. And I did ask her for a non-vinyl front one because I wanted to be able to use as much Outlander fabric as I possibly could without having it just being plain Outlander. But just so happy with that. And I've ordered a little um, scissor finder, Cheryl, <laughs> scissor finder off Wish that's a Scottish... Um, a Scottish sword type of thing that I can add to it to make it even more uh, outlanderish. <laughs> but love that new bag. So thank you, Taryn, for indulging in my obsession <laughs> with, uh, with the series and um, being able to create that for me. I really appreciate that. So thanks once again. So again, I'll link her down below if you're interested in ordering some of her bags. She does have pre-made ones. So if you just want to go on and choose something, um, she has different fabrics you can choose from. And this was all within a week. So I got this, I think she got the fabric and then a week later it was in the post. She's amazing. So thank you, Taryn. Now I'm getting really excited about the retreat that we've got um, organised in November at uh, through Linen and Threads. They're holding a retreat in Terrigal, New South Wales, which um, is going to be Plum Street Sampler with Paulette Stewart. So she's going to actually be at the retreat. So I'm so looking forward to that. Now Terrigal is quite a bit of a distance from Tassie, so it's going to be a mini little holiday for me. It's I'll have to do a couple of hours flight, then a couple of hours of of driving to get there so I decided I'm gonna actually try and do I well not try and do it on my own it is something I can definitely do on my own but without my hubby coming along with me so I'm actually on the scout for a roommate uh, for the retreat so if you're going to the retreat or thinking about it it looks like there's only two spots left on the retreat so it's 9 and 10 November and it's in Terrigal New South Wales so if you're coming along and you're looking for a roomie comment below because they're on I've been so much more fun to share your room with a stitcher and be able to reflect on the day and, and so forth. I know Tash the Starcross Stitcher is going to the retreat as well. I'm not sure if any other YouTubers are um, from Australia. So if you are going, um, let me know. It'd be great to know who we're going to be meeting and, and hanging out with for the weekend. So 9, 10 November 
uh, two spots left. I'll link Linen and Threads down below, so if you are interested, you can just go straight to their site. But it looks like it's going to be a fantastic weekend. And what a beautiful spot to be able to, to visit, especially for me in here, Tassie. It's going to be nice to get away for a, a couple of days and make a little mini holiday of it and hopefully find some um, LNSs on the way up and back down to the, to the airport. Now, giveaways. So I've got another BS. Oh, ooh, hang on. Bendy Stitchy's putting on her d stash. <laughs> I'm going to be back in a moment. That's something I can't miss typically BS to happen midway through a video. One moment, oops, more charts purchased. Dear OD, I can't help myself. Why? I, I should just not even look, really. I got about 10 charts from Bendy's last big D stash and I've already got now four from the next one. Oopsies, I mean, how am I ever gonna stitch all these things? I don't know. Can't help it, love what she's got. Have to keep purchasing them. Okay, so giveaway. So I had three magazine pullouts from last month. The first one I have um, is the Rocking Horse one. And that one's going to Stasha from Shonda, Chandra Tasha, um, who's one of my subscribers. So I've already got your postal address, Stasha, so I'll send that through to you. The next one was Annie's Market. There was a couple of people that liked this one that asked for that one. And that one's going to Meza, Meza Mamawi. So I'll just so it's M-E-E-Z-E-R-M-E-O-W-M-Y. So if that's you, just drop me an email below with your address and um, I'll pop that into the mail for you. But I will comment in about a week's time on your comments. I don't like to comment straight away because I like it to be a surprise when you watch the videos. <laughs> Um, and the last one I had was this cow one. And that's going to Highway Stitcher Colette Kingsley. So Colette, could you please send me an email uh, with your postal address and I'll get those out for you ladies. So the next three for this month that I have for you. So again, I've got three charts out of magazine. So they will be tri-folded. If you don't like tri-folded charts, please don't enter. Please be over the age of 18 so you can send me your, your postal address and mum and dad don't get mad. And please don't say giveaway in the comments. So the first one I've got is another alphabet chart. And I can't show you a great deal because a lot of it is charted. But what I can show you is those three uh, little motif ones that they've done. So it's a DIY chart. So it's got tools and paint cans and so forth with the other letters. So if you would like that chart, just say I'd like to stitch the alphabet. The next one I have is Paddington Bear. Now this has come out of the world of cross stitch, but it doesn't say what year. And I guess it was probably when the, the movie was re-released not that long ago. So this is the Paddington Bear chart. So if you'd like to stitch Paddington, please just say, I'd like to stitch Paddington. And the final one that I've got, now this is out of a, um, a magazine, but the chart itself was a separate big piece of paper chart. So, the, so, this, is, uh, so this is from Tuscany. So it's just sort of a setting with a, Tuscan building in it and the chart's quite big so if you'd like to stitch that one just say I'd like to stitch Tuscany and then I'll draw three well, three winners at random in my next video so with those other ones I'll comment again in a week just to uh, prompt you to send me through an email now, just before I go, I'm just going to put a, a call out for a chart that I'm looking for. I've been checking on a few different places and haven't been able to find it. It's a Lizzie Cage, but it is part of a mystery sampler. Um, Bendy sent this to me with my package of charts that I purchased from her last D stash. So this is the chart itself. And it came in a three-part... Um, three parts so like being a mystery sampler I guess you, you subscribed and they sent you three 
three different parts of it at times. So I've got the, the bottom part here, but I'm source, trying to source the first two of this sampler. I really quite think it's a sweet one. And I'm, I'm not a huge fan of Lizzie Kate, but I really like what this one says. So if you know um, any LNSs or you may have this for sale yourself, um, or you'd like to do a trade, please let me know because I'm yeah trying to seek out the first two parts of Spirit of Christmas Mystery Sampler by Lizzie Kate. And it doesn't have a lot of information. I don't know what year. Actually, I'll just have a quick look at the chart itself. No, it hasn't got a year on it, so I don't know how, how old it is. So if you know of anywhere where I can get part one and part two, I'd be really thrilled if you could let me know. Happy to um, purchase it if you're, you've got them and you no longer want them. Um, yeah, so if you know, that'd be great. Alrighty, guys, that's it for me today. Um, I hope you all have a great St. Patrick's Day on March 17. Um, that's something I'll be doing some, um, one of my projects there will be, or a new start on St. Patrick's Day for me. My mum's full Irish, so I'm half Irish. Um, so St. Patrick's Day is something that I like to, to celebrate, always with a bit of a pint of Guinness um, and a little bit of Irish stitching. So have a good month and I'll see you in April. Bye guys.